In this video, I'll show you how to get from a set of 3D meshes to a 3D statistical shape model. So, let's get right into it. Hi, and welcome to Coding with Dennis. My name is Dennis. This here is the first tutorial in a series on how to create statistical shape models. In short, a statistical shape model captures the variability in a set of objects. Usually, this set of objects are from the same shape class. So, for instance, we could measure the statistics of hand variability in one model and head variability in another model. But typically, we do not combine this into one model. Let's start out by looking at an example of vertebra shapes. Here, we visually inspect an already created statistical shape model. We see that each of the coefficients shows some variability in the geometry. We can also randomly set all of the parameters to, uh, to the model to create new novel instances. In my previous video, I already showed some use cases of statistical shape models. So if you're still not sure if this here is for you, have a look at the demo applications linked in the description. The code for creating such a model here is straightforward. So let's switch to an IDE and get typing. For the coding part, I'll be using Scala command line interface or Scala CLI for short. I'll use the Scala programming language and the Scalisma library for all shape model related stuff. Then I'll use VS Code as my de uh, development environment. First, go ahead and install Scala CLI if you haven't done so already. You can use Scala CLI version to check your system version. It needs to be at least version one. I will start a blank project by creating an empty folder or download the how to shape model repo from GitHub as referenced in the video description. This repo also contains data that I'll be using in the video series. First, go ahead, clone the project, cd into the folder. Now we can execute the Scala code from the terminal command using Scala CLI, then define project Scala and the main Scala file. Alternatively, we can open up the project in VS Code. We just need to initialize the folder we're using with Scala CLI, IDE setup and a dot as we are already in the folder. Then open VS Code with code and a dot. The Scala version that we use and the external libraries we'll, we'll be using are specified in the settings.scala file. We'll use the newer Scala 3 format and stick to the modern Python-like uh, styling with the indentation instead of curly brackets. And now let's load in some data to create a statistical shape model. The data is stored in the data folder on, in a PLY format. We need to specify one of these meshes as the reference mesh. In one of the next tutorials, I'll go over good practices of choosing such a reference mesh. For now, a random one can be chosen. Then we make a collection of all these meshes. Optionally, we can align all the meshes if they aren't done so already using the generalized precursor analysis. And finally, we create the model and visualize it in Scalisma UI. And that's basically all there is to it. Now you might ask why I would need a whole tutorial series to explain this simple method that only takes up a few lines of code. The reason for this is the requirement that these meshes here need to be in what is known as point correspondence with one another. Before explaining this phenomena, let's try to build a model from meshes that are not in point correspondence. Instead of using the registered folder, let's go ahead and try to use the raw data folder. If we log it to compute the model, we'll end up with a model where the deformations makes little to no sense. But most likely, you'll get an error regarding the number of points uh, in the meshes that we used. This will happen if the meshes in the dataset have a different number of points than the reference mesh. So now by printing out the points in each mesh, we clearly see that each mesh has a different number of points. If we do the same for the meshes in the registered folder, we see that they all have the same number of points. Now let's have a closer look at our meshes in our dataset. For this, let's visualize the same point ID on all the meshes in our dataset. So we simply loop over all the meshes, show them in Scalisma UI, as well as show a landmark at point ID in, let's just take point thousand. In the dataset that works, we see that the same point ID correspond to the same anatomical point on all the meshes. But now if we do the same for the aligned meshes or the raw meshes, we see that this here really isn't the case. 
So now let's simplify this even further. Let's look at a simple case of three hands. What the shape model should contain is essentially the mean deformation and variance of each single point in the mesh, in the reference mesh. And of course, the covariance neighboring points. So in case, case of the hands, we'll find the mean hand size as well as the variability of each point. The corresponding points are here visualized with colors, so the same point color is located at the same anatomical point on each hand. When meshes are extracted from images, for instance by using the marching cubes algorithm or by scanning an object, they will not by default be in point correspondence. They will rarely even have the same number of points. For this, we can perform what is known as non-rigid registration between a reference mesh and all the meshes in our data set to obtain this property. This is also often referred to as fitting. A simple way to explain this is that we choose one reference mesh and we then find a deformation field that deforms the reference mesh to approximate each of the meshes in the dataset. We'll then use the deformed mesh instead of the original raw mesh. Each of the meshes in the dataset will in other words get the same point structure as the reference mesh, which is why it's important to choose a good reference mesh. For this series of tutorials, we'll use a shape dataset from the vertebra segmentation challenge at Mikai. For simplicity, I've already extracted the mesh from 10 of the segmentation masks and added those to my GitHub repository, which is linked in the description. To run all of the examples shown in this and in future tutorials, you just need to execute all the Scala scripts in the prepared data folder one by one. The first script will align all the raw meshes to the reference mesh from the data folder. The second script will define a smooth deformable model uh, from the reference mesh to use for the non-rigid registration step. Same thing from it, we see that the deformation is smooth, but might not look like actual vertebras anymore. The third script will perform non-rigid registration. And the fourth script will build the actual shape model as also shown in this very introduction video. As already shown, when we now inspect the created shape model, random shapes from the model look like plausible vertebra shapes. In the following videos, we'll go over how to rigidly align the mesh data to simplify this non-rigid registration step, how to choose or design a reference mesh, how to choose the space of possible deformations that the reference mesh can undergo, and finally, how to use a deformable model for non-rigid registration, and then extra videos not specifically on building models or how to evaluate and compare shape models. And the last one will be on different ways to visualize statistical shape models. That was all for this video. Remember to give the video a like, comment below with your own shape model projects, and of course, subscribe to the channel for more content like this. See you in the next video.